Hello, welcome to Academy of Civil Services. In this video, I am going to explain you the concept of federalism in India. Federalism, the concept is coming recently in the news in the context of the referring to the cooperative federalism, confrontational federalism, and asymmetrical federalism. And this concept of federalism we have already covered in our previous video. If you want to know, you can watch those videos. In this video specifically, I am focusing on explaining the basic concept under Indian polity regarding Indian federal system. Federal system in India. That means our constitution of India have provided the federal form of government in India. So this concept is very much important for our exam perspective. So in this video, we will explain you the entire concept of Indian federalism and how we are different with other countries. Before we discuss about the concept of federalism, you should understand the related concept with the federalism like coming together, holding together, federation formed by way of integration, federation formed by disintegration, like those concepts also important. So federalism means that there is a particular state in that particular country or a nation or a state, if there is a more than one level of the government and if they are sharing the power between them, that is division of power between the one level of the government with the other level of the governments, then those kind of system, we can say they are following a federal form of government by dividing the power or division of power. So in this context, the first concept that is coming together federalism, this particular federalism that we can see in the United States, that means in United States, there are states, if they are thinking, if they are decided to form one state independently or one nation independently, they may not be able to survive because they are economically or military perspective or politically weak. In that context, if they are coming together and forming a big nation or a big state or a big country like the United States, that will help by collaborating each other and they will become a superpower. So this coming together federalism that you can see in the United States, all the states of the US came together and formed by a federalism, by an agreement and treaty and by way of integration, they formed a federal form of government. So this concept is known as coming together federalism. So in this slide, you can see that the yellow line that is a central union government that is federal government in the US. And then the green line, that green the round circle you can see in this slide are the federal unit or state government we can refer. So in the United States, you can see the center government that is the federal government and federal unit that is the states. And they are formed the federalism by agreement and the treaty and by way of integration that is also called as coming together federalism and they are enjoying equal power. So this is why we are telling that the United States or the federalism in the US is like symmetrical federalism. When we are coming to the Indian federalism, Indian federalism in this particular illustration you can see is entirely different from what we have seen in the US. Here you can see the small circle, big circle, medium circles and other different color circle. The green circle like the US that are the federal unit and the yellow circle here is the center corner. Then the yellow sided color that you can see the union territories. That is the green circle are the states, the central government and the union territories. Even union territories also we can see different in size in India. That means every state in India are part of our federal systems and we have a central government and the state government and we have a union territories. And we can also see the division of power in India through the seventh schedule of Indian constitution. And we are following the written constitution like the US and written constitution is a federal feature of Indian constitution. So this written constitution and the seventh schedule provided division of power between the center and state like the union list and state list and concurrent list. So this is also why we are saying that our constitution provided a federal form of government and under article one of Indian constitution also described India is a union of states. But we are different from the US. That means our state are not formed a federal federation by an agreement or treaty. That means in Indian federal system is not formed by an agreement or treaty like the US. We are formed by a disintegration. That is every state are part of India as a federal system. And this center government enjoy a, so, a strong control over the other states. That is holding together federalism is the concept that we can see in Indian constitution or Indian system. That is major power between the center and state if you are considered the major power or strong 
power or strong tendency of center we can see in indian model federalism and directly administered by the center you can see in the united territories that means union territories in india are directly administered by the central government either through the administrative or the lieutenant governor and some of the areas for example delhi cannot make any law on police on land or those particular area delhi does not have the power so indian federalism is an example of holding together by way of disintegration we have formed a federalism and we are not a formed federalism by agreement or treaty and within this we can see the unequal distribution of the power between the states that is why we are following asymmetrical federalism so these are the basic concepts that you have to understand whenever we are covering the federalism concepts so that we have seen the difference between indian federalism and the united states federalism so that means we are following the canadian model not the us model in canada the canadian model when we are referring to the canadian model we can see a very strong center in the canada and in india also we are following the same same concepts that is strong center tendency in our federal system and this federation term is not even mentioned in our constitution also instead we are referred union of the state the same word also you can see in the canadian constitution they also formed a federation by way of disintegration so they have a centralized tendency and there is a term union instead of federation and they also formed a federal government by way of disintegration and holding together and if you want to remember which model in terms of federation that we have followed you can remember the football the normally in football club we call fc that is the fc goa and recently isl was there and now the world cup was is going on so the m, m especially with the reference to the football we normally called as fc so that the short language you can use in order to remember which model that we are following that is canadian model the federal that is we are following the canadian model fc model that you can remember you can use these techniques if you are confused with which which federal system that we are follow we are not following american model so when we are covering federal system you have to understand the basics that is the definition of the federal system we have discussed that is the powers that is division of power between the more than one level of the government like the central government and the state government that is federal government and federal units then the federal feature in indian constitution has described as quasi federal system that is we are not completely or exactly like the federal feature or federal system like the us we are different that is why we are considered as quasi federal system that we can see both unitary feature and the federal feature in our constitution that means we are following federal form of government but we are not exactly following like the us or exactly like the complete federal system here we can see both unitary feature and federal feature that is why we are calling our federal constitution which provide quasi federal system and this federal character of indian constitution is a basic structure so if it is a basic structure if we cannot amend this federal provision if it is affecting the federal character or federal structure of india that cannot be amended any provisions of the constitution can be amended without affecting the basic structure so in that case federal character has to be protected and this continuous provision with reference to federal system i already mentioned that the term the federation never been used in our constitution instead under article it has described as union of the india or union of the states instead of federation and it is said that article 1 union of india that is bharat or union of the state that is bharat and that's why this particular point you should not know that is there is no term mentioned in the constitution that is the federation term is not mentioned if a statement come federation term is defined and mentioned in the constitution is wrong this particular word they may be using in our statement if they are asking in the prelims examination and i, I told you that we are following quasi federal form of government that we can see both unitary feature and federal feature so now i am discussing regarding what are the unitary feature of indian constitution what are the federal feature of indian constitution so we already have discussed that we have a strong center that is strong center tendency for example center government can change the boundary of different states center government can form new state out of one states that we have seen andhra pradesh later demarcated and formed telangana state and recently we have removed the status of state with the jammu and kashmir revocation of article 370 and later jammu and kashmir 
divided into two union territories that is jammu and kashmir union territory with legislature and ladakh as a union territory without legislature so that means central government that is parliament has this power that is one such example of the unitary feature of indian constitution even though we are following federal form of government another thing is single constitution that means we do not have any constitution for the states for example kerala cannot case say that they have a kerala constitution assam cannot say that they have a assam constitution and madhya pradesh or bihar or no state in india can say they have another constitutions apart from indian constitution that means in india we have only one constitution and we are representing only one constitution that is indian constitution is the unitary feature of our indian federalist form of government then single citizenship is also a unitary feature that is whenever we are referring to the citizenship we only say that i am an indian citizen that is single citizenship that is we are not a citizen of the particular state of assam kerala tamil nadu andhra pradesh telangana kashmir or no we are a citizen of india that is also a unitary feature of our our federalist form of government then all india service like whenever you are appointed to the upsc cadre and then you will become ias or ips or any other services then you are part of the all india services you will be appointed to the cadre of the states that mean you are working under the states but you are appointed by the central government as part of the all india services this all india service also an example of unitary feature that we can see in indian constitution then emergency provision whenever we are declaring national emergency or even state the president can declare the state emergency or a president rule so this in this case of emergency provision in particular case of article 352 national emergency article 356 state emergency article 360 regarding the financial emergency our central government have the power whenever we have declared national emergency center will take over the control of the state and central government can make even laws on the state subjects so in this case emergency provision in india in this constitutional provision is also a feature of unitary feature then recently you have seen news regarding the governor conflict with the chief minister or state government the state governors like we have seen in the assam governor kerala governor tamil nadu governor maharashtra governor all those governor are appointed by the president after the nomination by the central government and representing the central government the state governor in the state is a representative from the central government this also why we have a conflict between this governor and the chief minister in most of the case especially those states which is governed by an opposition party of the central ruling party in that cases this state governor appointed by the central government is also part of unitary feature of indian constitution then i am going to discuss about that is flexibility in our constitution some of the provisions can be amended by simple majority simple majority means to amend this particular provision is so easy as compared to the special majority so through simple majority some of the provisions of the constitution can be amended in indian constitution that is why the flexibility of the constitution is also a part of unitary feature of the federal system then integrated judiciary we have one unified integrated judiciary system that is apex court is supreme court then below high court then then we have the subordinate court district court etc so this hierarchy of integrated unified judiciary system that means if any particular violation of the fundamental right then we can go either to the supreme court directly or high court also if you are going to the high court if high court is not guaranteed your right even though you are belong to your own states but you can again go to the supreme court by challenging that then you will your fundamental right will be guaranteed and protected by the supreme court i mean the cases of the state and the central government will be handled by supreme court as well so this is why the, we are following integrated judiciary as well that is a unitary feature of indian constitution so these are the feature that we can see indian constitutions or indian federal system as a unitary feature then federal feature so what are the federal feature of indian constitution that is when we have studied the flexibility of indian constitution but some of the provisions in indian constitution the amendment is so difficult that is some amendment to the constitution under article 368 required special majority special majority is 2 by 3 majority so there are differences that anyway rigidity means very difficult or restricted amendment to the constitution or limited power of the parliament to amend the constitution even amendment cannot affect the basic structure so without affecting basic structure any provisions can be amended even some of the provisions has to be amended by 
special majority that is very difficult so this rigidity feature of the constitution is also a fatal feature of indian constitution then bicameralism bicameralism means that we have two houses in our parliament and some of the state may have two houses like legislative assembly and legislative council in case of parliament we have lok sabha as a lower house and rajya sabha as an upper house the lower house which is representing the people and upper house that is rajya sabha which is representing the interest of the states so interest of the state is protected by the rajya sabha the representation in rajya sabha this bicameralism we can see mostly in the federal form of government and in india we can see the bicameralism two houses of the parliament lok sabha house lok sabha and rajya sabha that is upper house this is an example of bicameralism that bicameralism in indian constitution is a federal feature the division of power that we have already discussed regarding seventh schedule of indian constitution and we have a written constitution both are the feature of federal feature of indian constitution that is division of power under seventh schedule like union list and state list and concurrent list state list means that the power listed under state list only state government can make law recently gambling is coming in the news gambling is a state subject that is state legislature can only make laws those on list of the state subject then division of power into the union list that is union list which are defense then banking some of the areas communication etc given to the central government union government and union government alone make laws then concurrent list that is either central alone or state alone can make law like agriculture education electricity and so on are part of our division of power in the seventh schedule is a feature of federal feature of indian constitution then we have independent judiciary independent judiciary also coming in the news and this concept we have borrowed from the united states independent judiciary like all the judges appointed in supreme court and high court they are enjoying a security of tenure and maximum in terms of high court they can continue in that judges office till attaining a 62 age then in case of supreme court they can continue till 65 years of age and their salaries are borrowed or drawn from consolidated fund of india this independent judiciary and the collegium system recently coming in the news that is there is no interference from the executive or legislature in case of appointment of judges to the supreme court and high court and they are enjoying independent judiciary and that the collegium system they are maintaining that independent judiciary and that is why the collegium system is continuing and that is why the national judicial appointment commission which earlier amended by the central government through the 19th 99th constitutional amendment act later supreme court decided that it is invalid and it is affecting the independent judiciary as a basis structure so it declared that that particular amendment is invalid or void so that independent judiciary that we have borrowed from the us is also part of our federal feature then supremacy of the constitution that means every law every provision every order of executive everything has to be followed according to the constitution so in india the land that the law of the land that is supremacy is the constitution so every law will be coming under the constitution no law can violate the provisions of the constitution so the supremacy is with the constitution even the parliament and we are following the concept of rule of law that is according to the law we have to rule that is supremacy of the constitution is also a feature of federal form of government so these are the unitary and federal feature of indian constitution and when you study federalism also you can see the different reference or different description of indian federalism by political philosophers or political scientists or political thinkers in that cases the kc bor he was also a political thinker described indian federalism as a quasi federal something in prelims examination who among the following described indian federalism as a quasi federal will be asked that is why this term described by different political thinkers also important quasi federal described by kc bor extremely federal described by paul apley then bargaining federalism was described by morris johnson federation with strong centralizing tendency in india was described by sir ivor jennings and cooperative federalism that is cooperation between the center and state or between the state in order to achieve common objective or common goals they will have continue or they will enhance or they will provide a cooperation between them so this cooperative federalism so that is indian federalism is a cooperative federalism was described by political philosopher grand gile hosting this particular question i think it was asked in kerala administrative service exam of the states so similarly this descriptions or the political philosophers opinion about 
Indian credit system will be asked in your prelims examination. These are, these are my notes that I have prepared for the exam perspective. So you can also use these descriptions and these quotes that will be helpful for your prelims exam. With that, I'm ending this session. Thank you all for watching this video.